<laughs> All right. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Thomas Allison. I live uh, right here in West Covina. Uh, I'm the my mother's eldest son. Uh, my father's youngest son. I grew up with uh, my two younger brothers in a single parent home uh, raised by my mom. Uh, I am engaged, not married. Uh, many of you met my fiance, if not all of you. Her name is Brittany Lokar. Uh, we're about three years apart, so she's still kind of doing the, you know, fresh out of college, soul searching, uh, thing like that. She wants to be an actress, or as she called it, an actor. Um, so she's doing <laughs> random performances here and there. Uh, wherever she could get in is where she performs. Uh, we don't have any children. Uh, and I actually don't live with her either, so uh, it's pretty light on a relationship. Uh, before moving to West Covina, I lived in Montclair for two years. Uh, before that, I lived in San Dimas, and then before that, I lived in Claremont. Before that, I lived in Laverne. Before that, I, as you can tell, I moved around a lot, uh, constantly in search of the right place to settle down. Um, even as a young child, I was born in uh, Los Angeles. We moved around that area a lot. My mom was constantly looking for the right place to grow uh, teenage boys, or at least young boys. As a single parent within our means, uh, we grew up very poor, so our uh, options were limited. That's what actually got us to the high desert, because housing was cheap. Um, I went to Victor Valley High School. Uh, after that, I went to University of Laverne where I studied business administration in hopes of one day being an entrepreneur. Uh, actually, after I graduated uh, business administration, I was kind of at a crossroads. I didn't know whether I wanted to get my MBA or uh, go to law school. Uh, I told my mom when I was a young child that I wanted to be the first black president. Barack Obama beat me to that. <laughs> um, so she would constantly remind me of my second dream of being the next Johnny Cochran. I always wanted to be the next somebody, I guess. I, you know, I didn't really have the confidence to make my own name uh, until now, I guess. Uh, so I did decide to go to law school after my mom bugged me, bugged me, bugged me, and then bugged me some more and a little more. And she's still bugging me. <laughs> but uh, I did it. She always will. <laughs> she always will. And I'm also, uh, right now, I'm studying to get my master's in public administration uh, from the University of Laverne as well. I'm a teacher of habit, so I don't really, actually that's it's kind of a contradiction. I do like to stay where I am, but I like to move around at the same time. So wherever I can stay, I stay, and wherever I move, I move. It, it happens however way it happens. Uh, sadly, I don't really have any hobbies. Uh, I like to stay active, so whenever I could get somebody to throw around a football with me, I could throw around a football. No one's ever wanted to play basketball with me. They complain that I foul too much, <laughs> <laughs> which I guess could be a legitimate concern. Um, but I mean, aside from just working and school, uh, just going to the gym and staying active is something that I, I do. Uh, uh, I started out in my professional uh, career in law by volunteering at a place called the Inland County Legal Services. And basically, bless you, ICLS is a uh, nonprofit organization that provides free legal services to the destitute. So people who are poor, uh, they come and we you know, handle their cases, er everything except for criminal law that's in the realm of the public defender. Uh, my primary assignment there was family law. And I kind of wanted to get a, introduced to family law just because growing up, you know, my mom had a lot of issues and she didn't have people there to you know, help her throughout the legal battles. Um, so what I, I mean, when I got there, and you know, poor people actually have the worst cases. Um, I don't know why, but you know, that just so happened to be the case. So I dealt with a lot of uh, rape cases. And when I say rape cases, I mean like a uh, husband uh, prostitute not his wife against her will. A lot of times uh, kids were held at you know gunpoint, knife point, things like that. So that was my introduction into wanting to be a lawyer. 
Um, and I mean, needless to say, it's been all uphill from there. Uh, so I'm not gonna talk about that. Uh, after I worked on those type of cases, I uh, graduated from law school and then I started working for the offices of Kenny Tan, which is a real estate firm. Uh, as you can tell, this is a lot lighter cases, uh, more boring, but at the same time, I enjoyed myself. Uh, while working for Kenny Tan, uh, he did offer me an attorney position, and then two weeks later, he lost a big case, causing a firm over $800,000. So he gave me an option. He told me that I could either stay there for a couple months as a law clerk and he hired me on, or I could, uh, you know, we could basically part ways because I told him I wasn't really content, you know, with the assignments that he had, given, he had started giving me because I was handling a lot of lawyer issues. I had wrote, written several motions for summary judgment uh, demurs, really big pleadings that, uh, you know, I just didn't want to go back to doing the light stuff, the discovery. And so it was kind of, we, we met a crossroads, where, whereas you could wait to be an attorney or, uh, you know, we could part our ways. And understanding and realizing that I've always had a dream of being an entrepreneur, uh, I decided to shake Mr. Tan's hand and thank him for the experience and decided to hang out my own shingle. Um, so right now I do uh, have my own firm. Uh, I have an office in the tenant building in West Covina. Drex was my neighbor. Uh, and then I also have a firm or an office in Riverside that's managed by a colleague. Um, my office, uh, and this is a, it's always been something that I've always thought would be the case. And now that I'm actually practicing and knowing to be the case, that there's an honest way of practicing law and I take it very seriously, and I take my clients very seriously, as well as the interests and rights that I'm protecting. So, I mean, like I said, I, I believe in honest law, and I tell my clients that you know, once they sign me, they're going to get honest law. I make sure that if a client wants any you know, documentation that I've prepared or work that I've prepared, I always make sure to forward them original, not the original copy, but a true and correct copy of the original document, uh, any work that I get from opposing parties, I make sure to forward that to them as well. Uh, my research uh, findings or whatever that I think would be helpful to getting them to understand the process and the law involved, I make sure to pass on to that, pass on to them as well. I think transparency is the number one uh, issue, I guess, behind practicing honest law, and that's what I've endeavored to do. Uh, I mean, and so doing that, I mean, I've kept myself busy. I mean, just this month, I've won uh, two custody cases where I've gotten a father sold in uh, sole physical and legal custody and a mother sold legal and physical custody. And I also won uh, my first criminal trial uh, this month. So it's been a big month for my firm as, and for me as well, as far as my professional growth. Um, I have a lot more uh, things to look forward to, and I have a lot of more big, or I have a few bigger hearings coming up, so I'm excited about that. Um, I really don't travel any much now. Uh, when I was in college, I, you know, debated on the University of Laverne debate team. From there, I, you know, I was invited to debate internationally. Uh, I've gone to Ireland, uh, Turkey. Thailand, I've been to England uh, three or four times. Uh, I've been to Denver, Oregon, uh, Washington, Vermont. Uh, I've also done some traveling playing football in college as well. Most of our uh, out-of-state games are in Washington and Oregon. Uh, so I've done some traveling and you know, I'm just, I feel like I'm blessed for the opportunities that I've had and that I'm gonna continue to have. Uh, and that's all I have on my prepared sheet. So if there's any questions. You have brothers and what do they do and how old are they? Uh, like I said, I'm the youngest of my father's children and the oldest of my mom's children. So I have two younger brothers on my mom's side. One is, uh, he's actually a student, a psych student at Pepperdine. Um, and the other one is, he. we all kind of had the option of going the right way or the wrong way. He kind of deviated a little, 
Um, so he, we're right, we're in the process of getting him back on the right path. Uh, without growing up without a consistent, you know, male figure, you know, it's kind of hard uh, for me, I guess, to be a role model to younger brothers who are a year or two younger than I was. But um, he's getting back on the right path. My older brother, uh, he actually same story. He deviated a, a lot further over to the bad side. So you know, I'm trying to. Give him the support and the you know acknowledgement that he needs to get back on path. Uh, my sister, I have an older sister. She's studying criminology. Uh, she wants to be a parole officer. So you know she's trying to make her move, her career move as well. Hobbies? My hobbies? Yeah, like I said, I really don't have any. Uh, I like to drink. Uh, you know, <laughs> hang out with friends. <laughs> Hey, hey, we got a lot in common. <laughs> yeah, alcohol is usually the common denominator. Well, Rotary will keep you very busy this coming year, okay? Oh, so, I, I, I anticipate it. What kind of law do you practice besides community law? Um, well, I'm, I'm a general practitioner, so basically I take cases that I feel comfortable with. Um, I have a number of custody cases. Uh, I have that criminal case that I just finished and another criminal case, um, <coughs> some evictions, divorce, uh, just whatever. I have a new case up that's coming up. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, a couple wants to adopt a, a, an illegal immigrant that they brought over to work. Um, he was 14, but they want to adopt him um, because you know where he's from is, I forgot the city, but I guess that's where the they had just caught the drug dealer, the big drug dealer that was decapitating everyone. Um, so they're trying to keep him, prevent him from going back. So that's going to be an interesting one, um, working with the international perspective of, of adoption. But it's really, like I said, whatever I feel confident in taking. Uh, as a lawyer, I have the duty of you know competence, so I can't take anything that is above my head without associating with another counsel. So. Have you, done, have you done any probate? Sorry. Probate? Yeah. Uh, I've dealt with the <coughs> trust. I have. I did have dealt with some trust issues. Um, I've also uh, had to do a durable power of attorney for a friend whose grandfather was uh, pretty close to dying. So yeah, I've done very little probate stuff. Not much. Have you done any construction law? No construction law. That's Curtis. Yeah, if you guys have any more questions, you've been charged for my time. So. <laughs> Talk fast. <laughs> now, did you play I basketball in high school? Did you play football? Did you uh, and this is a, I mean, I have, I have, I have a, honestly. A kind of a love hate relationship with the game of basketball. Um, I was always cut from the team before cuts were actually made. And it happened on two isolated uh, occasions where I tried out for the elementary uh, basketball team and I was told that I should go play football and I was let go the first week of tryouts before, actually a week before cuts were to be made. Uh, and then junior high, the same exact thing happened again. I was uh, told that uh, the coach was afraid that I was going to take out his players, <laughs> um, so that it would probably be better if I went and played football. <laughs> After the second time, I got the hand and I just gave up my uh, basketball aspirations and joined the football team. My mom had this arbitrary rule that I wasn't allowed to play football until I uh, reached high school. I mean, I guess apparently your bones become 100 times stronger <laughs> at the threshold of the <laughs> um, So I, I wasn't able to play any le little league.